Hello, welcome back to Alikhan Maths. In this video, I'm going to be going through and proving the final three essential circle theorems that tangents from a point are equal in length, the alternate segment theorem, and the intersecting chords theorem. Remember to like and share this video, subscribe to the Alikhan Maths channel, and leave a comment with any feedback or requests for topic or questions. All my videos on circle theorems can be found in the playlist down below, and you can watch my last video by clicking on the icon in the top right corner of your screen. The first circle theorem that we're going to discuss in this video states that tangents from a point are equal in length. A tangent is a straight line which only just touches the circumference of a circle, only meeting it at one point. Here, to prove the theorem, we want to prove that the line AC is equal to the line BC. Keep in mind that when we are talking about tangents from a point which are equal, we only talk about the line up until the point of tangency. We can clearly see that this first tangent appears to be longer than the second down here. However, when we say that the tangents are equal, we mean that the tangent up until point A and the tangent up until point B are equal in length. In order to prove this theorem, we first want to draw construction lines. Firstly, the radii OA and OB, and the line OC joining the origin of the circle to our external point outside the circle. Remember that all the radii of a circle are equal, therefore OA and OB are equal in length, and this is something which will be useful for us later on in this proof. Next, remember one of the first and more basic circle theorems that we covered in my first video, that tangents meet radii at right angles. If you want to re-familiarize with the theorem, then please click on the link in the top right corner and you can watch that segment of the video again. Now we have that angles OBC and angles OAC, where the radius meets the tangents, are 90 degrees, right angles. Now there are three things which we can notice about the triangles OBC over here and OAC over here which will help us make a deduction which will be able to prove the theorem for us. Firstly, we have a pair of equal angles, the angles OBC and OAC, which are both right angles. Next, we have two equal sides, OA and OB, which are both radii. Since these triangles are both right angled, we can call their longest side the hypotenuse, and both of them share the same hypotenuse, the line between the origin of the circle and our outside point. Using those three properties of the two triangles, we can say that the triangles OBC and OAC are congruent. This means that they're completely identical. Since we've shown that the two triangles are congruent or identical, this means that this side is identical to this side in these two triangles. The shared hypotenuse is equal, they have a shared angle, and since they're identical, this means that the side BC and the side AC must be exactly the same in length. Having shown that the triangles are congruent, we've thus proved what we've originally sought out to prove and thus prove the whole theorem. The next theorem we're going to prove is called the alternate segment theorem, which you might sometimes find written as AST. This states that the angle between a triangle and a tangent is equal to the opposite angle in that triangle when that other angle is in the alternate segment. Remember that a segment is a region formed by a chord. So looking at this chord BC, the circle is divided into two segments, one here and one larger one here. So the angle formed between the triangle and the tangent BCD is equal to the opposite angle in the triangle BAC because it's in the alternate segment. One is in the smaller segment here, one is in the larger segment over here. There's three conditions that need to be followed to prove that the alternate segment theorem is present within a problem. Firstly, and unsurprisingly, you need a circle, then you need a tangent to that circle, and finally you need an inscribed triangle. This means that all of the vertices of that triangle have to be located on the circle's circumference much like a cyclic quadrilateral, like we covered in the last video, but imagine that as a cyclic triangle instead. We can see that in the first example on the left, there is a circle, there is a tangent to that circle, however the triangle isn't inscribed. Only two of the vertices of the triangle are located on the circumference and the third is located on the center point, so this does not follow the alternate segment theorem. In the second example here, we do have a circle, and we do indeed have an inscribed triangle. However, this line here isn't a tangent, it's what's called a secant a chord which only touches the circle at two points before extending out past the circumference. So again, this does not follow the alternate segment theorem. We want to prove that the angle BAC is equal to the angle BCD. To prove this theorem, we're going to want to draw two main construction lines. Firstly, a diameter up through C to another point we've drawn on called P, so the diameter PC, before we draw a chord connecting point P to point B. We're going to introduce our first variable, X, which is angle BCD. This will make solving the algebra later on in this problem much easier. Now we think back to one of the first circle theorem rules that we covered, that the radius meets tangents at 90 degrees. This means that this angle, PCD, is a right angle of 90 degrees. From that we can deduce that angle PCB is 90 minus x, 
because angle PCB and BCD have to add up to 90, this is x, so this must be 90 minus x. Because the construction line PC that we drew is a diameter, notice that we've split the circle into two halves. We've created a semicircle on this side. This means that angle PBC, which is created from lines which join from the edges of the semicircle, must be a right angle because the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. By drawing in the chord PB at the start, we formed a triangle PBC over here. Because the angles in the triangle sum to 180 degrees, we subtract the angle PCB and the angle PBC, which we both have, from 180 to get the value of the angle CPB, as shown at the bottom over here. Once we tidy up the algebra, we find that CPB is equal to x. So we mark that in in our diagram as well. Finally, notice that angle CPB and angle BAC are subtended along the same arc. Therefore, using the rule we covered in our last video, this is also equal to x. As a result, we have proven that both angles BAC and angles BCD are equal to x, proving that they're equal like we originally sought to do at the start. Therefore, we've proved the alternate segment theorem. The final circle theorem that we're going to cover is called the intersecting chords theorem, which states that in a diagram such as this, when you multiply the lines OA and OC, you get the same result as if you multiplied OB and OD. The chords in this diagram are actually diameters since they pass through the center of the circle, but this works for all chords as long as they intersect. Firstly, we draw two chords connecting AB and CD to form two triangles, triangle BAO and triangle COD. Next, we label two of our angles. Angle OBA is what we call X, and we call angle OAB Y. Next, we use the rule that angles subtended by the same arc are equal. This tells us that angle OCD in this triangle is also equal to X. Angle ODC in this triangle is also equal to Y, because they're both angles subtended along the same arc. Because the angles in the triangle sum to 180 degrees, we can work out that angle BOA is equal to 180 minus X minus Y because we've got an x there and a y there. Because vertically opposite angles are equal, we can also work out that angle COD is the same, 180 minus x minus y. We can also work this out by using the same property of angles in a triangle summing to 180 degrees. Now that we've worked out all three angles of triangles BAO and COD, we can say that they're both similar using the AAA rule. This means that all three angles of each triangle are equal, an x and x, y, y, and 180 minus x minus y, along with 180 minus x minus y. Similar triangles have the same ratios between their sides, so we can redraw these triangles, work out which sides correspond to which other sides, work out the ratio between them, and see how we can prove our theorem from there. Now I've redrawn both triangles BAO and triangle COD, making sure that both sides are aligned because of the angles x between them and the angles y between them. Notice that you might have to rotate them from how they appear in the triangle, but once you work out their orientation, you can use the relationships between the sides to form an equation. The ratio between OA on the first triangle and OD on the second triangle, also written as OA divided by OD, is the same as the ratio between OB and OC. Now we can multiply both sides of this equation by OD and by OC to remove the denominators. OD in the denominator is cancelled out by the OD that we're multiplying by, and similarly, the OC in the denominator is cancelled out by the OC that we're multiplying by. When you multiply these out finally, you're left with OA times OC equals OB times OD, which is what we were originally trying to prove. In our case, the two chords which we had passed through the center point, so we're really diameters. But this intersecting chords theorem can work with any two chords. For example here, PT times TR would also be the same as QT times TS. This concludes my third video on circle theorems, and you can find the rest in the playlist linked in the description down below. Subscribe with post notifications turned on so you never miss a future upload. Thank you so much for watching.